So guys, qualifying is over at the 2019 British Grand Prix at Silverstone and it definitely did have its surprises and was very close actually, especially for the fight for pole position. And today we are going to review exactly what happened in qualifying for the 2019 British Grand Prix. First though, before we get into the teams and how they did, let's first look at the results. So Valtteri Bottas gets pole by six thousandths of a second from Lewis Hamilton. Charles Leclerc third. Verstappen, great performance in P4. Better, a lot better from Pierre Gasly, P5. Awful for Vettel in P6. Ricardo P7, good for him. Norris, P8. Great for Albert in P9. Hulkenberg, P10. And then Giovinazzi, 11th. Raikkonen, 12th. Sainz, poor in 13th. Then Grosjean, 14th. Perez, 15th. Magnussen, 16th. Kvyat, 17th. Stroll, 18th. Russell, 19th. And Robert Kubica, again, at the back. So now let's get into the teams. First off, Mercedes, who at the end of the day, when it mattered most, they did just about have the best car. But again, it was only just because Ferrari and also Red Bull with Max Verstappen were very close when it mattered. But for Valtteri Bottas, great for him getting his first pole at Silverstone and his first pole since the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix. So great for him. And hopefully he really can... Uh, use that to go on and win the race because for his world championship, he absolutely has to. I will say Bottas, again, as we've seen in 2019, he's so good at putting in a great first attempt in the final part of qualifying. And then in the final run uh, in Q3, he tends to just not quite hook up the lap, but because his first run is so, so good, Valtteri ends up getting pole position. Valtteri, you have to say, in qualifying in 2019, not all the time, but most of the time, has been very, very strong. And when it has mattered, he has produced just as much as Lewis Hamilton has, if not even more. So great for Valtteri Bottas. Lewis Hamilton second. Definitely a surprise to see Lewis Hamilton second because we thought if the car was the best uh, on the grid, that he would be on pole, but he is not. So that definitely is a surprise. But as long as Lewis Hamilton can beat Valtteri Bottas down into turn one, he should go on to win the race. But if Valtteri stays ahead, then Lewis is in definitely for a tough fight to get his uh, get another win at Silverstone. Next up, Ferrari. Ferrari, I think today with one of their cars did pretty well. Charles Leclerc just under a tenth off pole position. Maybe he could have got more out of the car. I don't know. But I think Charles did well because Ferrari coming into this weekend didn't think they'd be that quick. But with Charles Leclerc, they were very, very quick. But with Sebastian Vettel, he has this weekend, you have to say, he has been absolutely terrible. P6 on the grid, and he will start on the soft compound tyre, the most unfavourable compound to start on. So he is not looking good for the race. He, he doesn't really have a chance of a podium tomorrow because of that and because of his lack of speed. And I know he has had some reliability issues in the last three races, but you have to say, ever since the controversy in Canada... He has been really off the boil and hasn't looked the same since. Hopefully he can improve going forward. But Vettel really looking bad at the moment. But for Ferrari, it definitely could have been better. But I think at least with one of their cars, they did do the best they could do. Red Bull, though, you have to say, very, very good. Max Verstappen, P4 and within two tenths of a second of pole position. Red Bull, if you compare them to how they were at last year's British Grand Prix, but also if you compare them to how they were earlier in the season, Red Bull have made a big, big step forward. And I wouldn't be surprised if Max Verstappen possibly contended with a race win tomorrow because he's actually closer to pole in Silverstone than he was at the Red Bull ring and we all know what happened two weeks ago so 
Max Verstappen in the Red Bull looking really, really strong. Also, credit to Gasly for improving his performance and being where he is. He could have been probably closer in lap time to Verstappen, but in terms of position, I don't think he could have done any better. But for Red Bull tomorrow, definitely look out for them because I think they're going to have a very strong race pace. And I think Max Verstappen will be very strong in the race and might, if he gets a good enough start this time, he might contend for the race win once again. But next up, we'll now go on to the midfield. First off, Renault. Good performance by Renault. P7 and P10. Daniel Ricciardo, again, getting the best out of that Renault car. He really has been very good this season, but just hasn't had a good enough car at times to really show that. But today, Renault were definitely a lot better. And Ricciardo, you have to say, from Q2 on, has looked like he was going to be in P7. So... I think definitely he does deserve that position. And I think Ricardo going into the race tomorrow looks pretty good because the Renault race pace is also looking pretty good. So I think Ricardo will get a strong points finish. Hulkenberg, I think Hulkenberg could have done better with his final position. But I think, to be honest, he did pretty well to get into the top 10. So credit to Hulkenberg. And Renault are looking definitely better for the race tomorrow than I thought they would be. Next up, McLaren. You have to say, have had a definitely a much worse qualifying than we thought they would. We thought they'd be P7 and P8 comfortably, but they're nowhere near that. Norris is on the fourth row in P8, but Carlos Sainz down in 13th. That is not good enough. I think Norris, to be honest, I think he did the best he could. The McLaren just wasn't as quick as... We thought it would be when it mattered. But Carlos Sainz did a terrible final attempt in qualifying two. He was a second down, I believe, on his quickest run in qualifying two. And got knocked out in P13. Now, because of how quick the car is, I think Carlos Sainz is likely to finish in the points tomorrow. But he doesn't want to be starting there because... His job in terms of getting a good amount of points is now made a lot more difficult because he messed up the lap and starts in P13. It's a shame for him. And McLaren, you have to say, a bit of a shame, their performance. Hopefully, it can be better tomorrow. Next up, Alfa Romeo. P11 and P12. That's kind of all right, to be honest, because... You know, they get to start the race tomorrow on whatever tyres they want to. So I guess for them, that's absolutely fine. And I think Alfa Romeo, for sure, um, are going to be featuring very strongly for the points with Ricardo, Norris, Hulkenberg and Albon. By the way, another shout out to Antonio Giovinazzi for uh, out qualifying Kimi Raikkonen for, I believe, the third time in the last four races. He is definitely... Uh, showcasing why he should stay at Alpha for 2020. If he keeps this up, you have to say he absolutely does. But for the race tomorrow, Alpha are still looking good, again, because they get to start on whatever tyres they want to. Next up is Haas. P14 and P16 in qualifying. What a terrible qualifying. It's a massive contrast to a year ago where I believe there were P7 and P8 on the grid. This team has gone so far back and I don't see how tomorrow with their famously bad race pace, how they can possibly get near the points. Next up, Toro Rosso. First, let's talk about Daniel Kvyat, who you have to say, considering where his teammate was, was poor today because P17 is not where the Toro Rosso car should be. It should be, at worst, on the back end uh, of the top 10, say around even P11, P12. It should not be P17. Very poor for Kvyat. He was struggling with the balance of his car, but that's not, I'm afraid, a good enough excuse. Uh, for Albon, though, very underrated performance, and I think one of the stars of qualifying today up there with, you know, Bottas, Verstappen, Leclerc. I think he did very well today to finish in P9, and that's definitely two or three positions higher than I think Toro Rosso were expecting. So great for Albon. And hopefully at what is kind of a home race. Hopefully he can get points tomorrow. 
because if he did, that would really help his case for possibly a Red Bull seat for 2020 if he starts turning it on. And the last team in the midfield, of course, is Racing Point, who again are still at the very back of the midfield. Sergio Perez did do very well, though, to get into qualifying too. But because the car's not quick enough, he finished up in P15. Stroll again, knocked out in Q1. The guy is so bad in qualifying. And this team cannot wait for that massive upgrade, which is basically a B-spec car coming at Hockenheim. And of course, Williams are at the very back. But guys, that is it for qualifying for the 2019 British Grand Prix at Silverstone. And definitely, if you look at the top four on the grid, we are in for another great race in Formula One in 2019.